Welcome back, everybody. It's Kova from Tweak Music Tips. We want to give a special shout out to Cleveland Terry, who came to our studio in person and gave us a walkthrough of how to mini map in Serato Studio. Now, there's a lot of frequently asked questions, and make sure you stay to the end because we had live viewers asking questions on the spot. If you guys haven't checked us out, please make sure you jump on to Twitch on Wednesdays and Fridays, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Central European Time on twitch.tv forward slash tweak music tips. Well, enough of the chit chat. Let's jump into the video. Basically, we're going to use a standard controller and uh, Cleveland's going to show us two ways. We're going to show you how to MIDI map with stems and how easy it is. OK, so first off, it's nowhere near as hard as everybody wants to think that it is. So in Serato, and this would apply to both Serato and mm. Serato Lite, but Serato Lite slightly different because you are, you're limited in what you can do. But we're going to start with Pro because I think with a lot of people here are using like 1000s and Ref 7s and all that stuff. When stems first came out, it was a little, little more difficult because you really had to do everything yourself. But then they came out with an update and they kind of put things in, in place to make things easier for you. So if you head over to settings and go to your DJ preferences tab right here. If you scroll down, you scroll down to right here where it says replace pad mode with stems. Now it's going to default typically to sampler, but depending on the actual uh, controller, you might have more options. So for instance, for this one, yes, you have sampler as an option. You have loop roll as an option. If you have a controller with slicer, then you can choose slicer. And I like to choose slicer because, well, you know, nobody uses slicer. So it's a perfectly good unused button. I know a lot of people use sampler like I do. And I, and I personally use loop roll. So that's always a little bit of an issue for me. If you find one with the slicer, you're good to go. So once you've selected, that's all you have to do. We choose sampler and, you know, we're done with that. Now, if you go to a track and you take it over to stems. If I hit the button, you see the buttons are lit up. Why aren't you working? Oh, because he's got samples on here. Hold on. Sorry, there we go. I had to hit the toggle on. Now, as you can see up top here, we have vocal melody bass. We click it off, there you go. We're removing all the stems and then the bottom ones apply to the, to the stem effects. So that's the first thing. Again, if you have slicer, if you have loop roll, all of those buttons are right here. Sometimes with the loop roll, the reason why I'm not the biggest fan of using loop roll is because on some controllers, the loop roll is actually on the second pane. And as you see here, I don't like the fact that on, for instance, this one, as you can see, the loop roll is the secondary pane. And I feel like if you're going to use stems, uh, you want it to be on the first page. You want to be able to have it readily accessible to you. If you have to hit too many pages, it's an issue. So I prefer to use something that's always active. So that would be the sampler and this controller itself. Now, if we want to do it manually, and sometimes you're going to have to, uh, for instance, if you have a ref seven and you know, you got these top buttons up here, well, these can be stems. So my ref seven, my top buttons are all for stems. So they're always active. They're always available. And it makes it easier for me to, to mess around with it. So let's go to uh, the MIDI mapping. Now, to MIDI map, hopefully some of you have MIDI mapped. It's actually not that hard to MIDI map anything. It's just making sure that you don't want to take over certain buttons. Like you don't want to MIDI map over a hot cue button because you're going to hit hot cue. It's going to try to do multiple things at one time. So I prefer to do it on something that we don't really use as much, but we're going to take that off real quick because we're not going to replace the stems. As you see here now, the sampler's back to normal. Uh, we're going to head over to MIDI, and then we have the Rev 1 right here. So we're going to click on the Rev 1, and then we are going to check this Allow Serato Hardware Remapping. That's the key here. So once we select that, we can get out of the screen, and then we're going to move over to stems. Now, again, this can be mapped to anything, and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Once you click MIDI, anything that you want can technically be mapped. You see, I'm just hovering over these buttons right now. But all of these things have the option of being remapped to a button. 
So for instance, some things that say your mixture doesn't have sync and you want to have sync, you can literally create a button for that. Now what they've done, which is what I really like is on the mapping, they've created uh, like a silent queue. Like you can do things like your silent queue and all of those things. And down here are some of the secondary options. And you see here the silent queue button right there. That's your secondary option. So I like that because before I think it was like maybe a large release, maybe four or five. That wasn't that wasn't an option. Okay, so let's head over to stems. And now as we roll over it, obviously we can assign it. So we're gonna go to uh we can do I don't know, I don't know the the rev one tracking, so we will use a sampler again. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the sampler and then we're gonna click on vocals. And we're just going to select that button. And now it says it's assigned. And we can take this through. Make sure. I just overwrote it. Hold on. And we're just going to click on all of them to assign. And we can do the same thing for the bottom ones. And you have to do this for both sides. So don't forget. We, we don't need to do it today, but you do have to do it for both sides. Then you can test them without leaving the MIDI just by clicking the button. And presto, everything works properly. So if you have like a Rev7, this is what I would do. I would use those buttons for it. And I believe I would take over, I think I took over maybe hot queue or something like that up there. It's a different MIDI, MIDI section. So there's that. That's pretty much done for the MIDI mapping. You just click the MIDI mapping off and you're good to go. As you see here, everything is working properly. There are so many options in the MIDI mappings. You can do so much. I know a lot of people, they don't take the time to kind of see all the options, but any of these things can be MIDI mapped. Like I'm a big fan of silent queue. So you can, in, in essence, you know, look around your board here and decide if there's a button that you're just not using. Say, for instance, I'm trying to look on this board to see if there's anything that like I wouldn't use. Not a lot of buttons on this board. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd probably, I'd probably keep it the same. But what you could do is something like this. You can go to your hot cues, right? And you can go back up to your hot cues. And let's say, for instance, we do start and stop here. And you use maybe six, six cue points. You know, most people will use like four to six. You can take this last one right here and turn it into the silent cue. So we're going to go ahead and click on this. And then we're going to take this last button and select it. Now, when we hit your hot cue button number eight, you're in silent cue. Click it again and you take it off. A lot of people, that's the best possible scenario because it is sitting on your hot cues already. So you can just click it on and then you can you just stay in the pad. So I'm a big fan of that one. But again, you have to do both of them. You just have to independently do it. You can MIDI map knobs also and do all those things. We don't necessarily need to go into that. But I'm just providing like a surface level for you to go crazy. You know, and obviously, if you have any type of MIDI lighting or any of that stuff, you know, there's options in there to do MIDI mapping. If you're using Rekordbox, like you can literally MIDI map all of your lighting from Rekordbox lighting mm -hmm. in your pads. Uh, so there's a lot of different options. Serato has come a long way over the last few years since after the pandemic. A lot of these silent queue options weren't options before. A big fan, big fan. One of my favorite parts that you're showing us is you don't have necessarily have to get a whole new controller. No, definitely not. You know, and I think that's the thing where everybody's like, oh, I'm going to abandon my controller. Meanwhile, you're showing them that right in Serato, there's all these features. So I think that's super cool. One thing we didn't mention, if you're using Serato DJ Lite specifically, mm. you know, because this controller will come with Serato DJ Lite or any of the lower tier controllers. If you're using Serato DJ Lite, you are limited to just whatever they choose for you. You can't, there is no MIDI mapping in Serato DJ Lite. So I believe they use the sampler as their, as their override for stems. But besides that, you can use stems on everything. Serato Lite, Serato Pro, it's all, it's all the same. So Calvin Cornell asks, what is Silent Q? So basically, Silent Q is a way to mute out the incoming song, which allows you, historically speaking, okay, if you were using 
we'll use turntables as a perfect example, but it's branched off from there. If you were using turntables and you were trying to get to your, your cue points and maybe, you know, you were mixing on this side, you were doing your scratching on this side and you want the beat or the verse to come in over here, right? So you're doing all your stuff, the beats playing, and this is a way to basically, you remember back in the day when you would do the um, two second loop in the beginning of the track, okay. which, and then it was just dead air. Well, that dead air is so you could hit your cue point in the time and it could be running itself. So it's basically looping that dead air and then you can keep your fader open, do the things you need to do. And when you're ready, hit the button and now you're playing the track. That's ultimately what Silent Cue has replaced, the, the need for that dead air. Because you hit it, it's an automatic mute. You can keep your faders open. You can keep faders up and your crossfader open. And you hit the button whenever you're ready, and then you're good. Let's see. What's the right update? Uh, is safe to use stems. Yeah, 3.0, 3.1. Let's see. Pre Young Johnny's in the building. Salute Good to old him. PJ. What's going on, fam? Good to see you, man. Stems did start in 3.0, but light and pro. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. So he just clarified that. <laughs>